So I have a lot of friends who are using drones to make images now or videos. Uh, I saw them at uh, Austin uh, at South by Southwest. People were flying drones over the crowds uh, to take video of uh, the bands playing. Um, at the Ritz, there's a guy who uh, uses a D DJI uh, uh, drone to take vi video of uh, wedding parties and on and on. Well, today we have a sneak peek of something new in the drone space, particularly interesting for people who uh, are going to shoot video and photos because this thing is gimbaled and we're going to learn all about what that means right now. <laughs> I'm director of aerial imaging at DJI, and uh, I've been a photographer for maybe 15 years now, and that's led me, because of a tech background, basically to the intersection of photography and technology. So I've been in that space for a long time, and uh, now I'm with DJI showing off our newest offering. Yeah, you used to work for Lytro, which is a really cool camera, and I really appreciated my, my Lytro. Yeah. Um, and now you're playing with drones, now which are a drones. lot more fun. <laughs> <laughs> they are a lot of fun, yeah. Flying things, that, you know, so the, drones are uh, fun on uh, multiple levels, right? It's fun to fly things around. And every kid, is when they see a drone, it's like, ah, oh, daddy, look, look at the drone, you know? Yeah, there's almost universal appeal. I mean, if you go out and fly one, every kid will run over, but every, you know, basically every male, every male <laughs> in the area will certainly come over, along with a good number of non-males, of course. <laughs> So this is a new product. It's being announced right now at the NAB conference, uh, and the video is going up at the same time. What makes this different? And this is from DJ, DJI. This is the new Phantom. Well, tell me what, what it's called. Sure. This is the Phantom 2 Vision Plus, and it is a, a quadcopter with an integrated stabilized camera. Uh, so what makes this really exciting uh, is that it's a ready-to-fly yeah. camera. So. Uh, it's, it's very easy to fly. It has GPS integration, which means that if you put it in the air, it will hover exactly where you left it. So it's, it's easy to fly, uh, even for beginners. And uh, what's really exciting is this integrated camera. So uh, this camera is tiny, as you can see, yeah. and it features a three-axis stabilized gimbal, brushless gimbal. And what that means is uh, if you fly it like a crazy person, or if it gets hit by a gust of wind, you'll see it stabilize itself. You know, the quadcopter will try to stay in the same place, but the camera will, will stay pointed exactly where you left it. Wow, and so there's little electronic motors here that are doing that gimbal, so that it's sensing where the gravity is and it's keeping it steady, right? Yeah, so there are three brushless motors and they're tiny. Uh, you can see them right here, here, and there's one up here for the yaw axis. Yeah. Um, and there's a sensor on the camera platform inside this housing that says, I would like to be in this position and the gimbal controller then tells the motors where to go to keep this thing totally stable in real time. So it, we don't know the price yet on this, right? Uh, we don't. By the time this video is out, we will know the price. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, not a, it's not that cheap, but it's not that unaffordable either, for, particularly for a wedding photographer or somebody who's going to be doing professional video of, of uh, music concerts or news events, stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, DJI's lower end uh, offerings start at about $400, um, and the, right now they go up to $1,200. This should come in somewhere around then, probably a little bit higher because of the, the integrated gimbal. Um, and uh, the, the ones that with, come without cameras are obviously much less expensive. They don't feature smartphone integration, which, which this one does. Um, but if you're looking for a package that lets you put a camera in the air to shoot video or stills, um, and also something that lets you see what the camera is seeing in real time. Uh, this is basically offers uh, all of those features. Okay. Um, of Let, let's talk about the quality on the camera. What kind of uh, quality are we going to get on video, for instance? So on video, you, you get full HD at 1080p 30, uh, 30 frames a second. Um, you can also shoot 1080 at 60i, um, and you can shoot 720p uh, 
at 60p. So if you want to do slow motion, uh, you can shoot at 720. Okay. Um, you can also adjust things that photographers like to adjust, like sharpness, exposure, these sorts of things um, in real time through the app uh, when you're in the air. So um, that's something that we've, you know, well, aerial imagers have wanted for a long time. Uh, when, you, when you're up taking a shot, you know, you don't want to bring the drone back down to do a camera adjustment. You really want to just adjust it on the fly. Yeah. Um, so it, let's say I'm flying this up on my, uh, first of all, does it work with Android or just iPhone? Right now? Uh, Android and iPhone. Android and iPhone. Mm -hmm. So you get an app on your iPhone or on your Android and I can see what the camera is seeing so I can, uh, I can uh, you know, turn it or uh, fly it higher or lower, right, to get the, the shot I want. Right. So it does a few things. Um, first, it communicates via Wi-Fi. And um, in the past, that has limited your dis the distance you can fly. Um, but the iPhone or Android device actually talks to this range extender, yep. which talks to the, uh, the vision. Uh, and so that gives you a range of about 800 meters. So we're talking half a mile uh, in wow. range in, in ideal conditions, of course, you know, like a flat plane. Um, and in addition to the first person view to live view from the camera, you also get telemetry information. So you get battery life, you get um, number of GPS satellites so you can monitor how, you know, how well the drone is talking to GPS um, and, um, and other things as well. You can tell where it is. And so if, let's say you accidentally land somewhere or it, you, know, you, or you crash, um, it has a, a locator so you can see where it is uh, using Google Maps and, okay. and go pick it up. We'll talk about flying in a minute. I, I want to focus first on the camera because this this is I think this is why you're going to buy this particular drone because there's other drones just to fly around and right. and you know you can get drones now for th two three hundred dollars right that you just fly around. Um, the you can shoot stills you said right. Tell me a, a little bit about some of the adjustments you can do on stills and you you can even Instagram live from your phone while <laughs> yeah. it's flying right. Yes, yeah. So if I'm shooting a news event, like a fire, a, a building burning down or something like that, I can actually be shooting live uh, still images and getting those out to uh, Instagram pretty quickly, right? Right, absolutely. So the, the camera is, is a 14 megapixel camera. Um, it has, uh, obviously, you can change the size of the pictures. Um, something that photographers are really excited about um, is integrated Adobe DNG raw shooting. So you can shoot straight to a DNG file. and you know these action side action camera uh, sized cameras uh, in the in the past have um, have really had issues with like, like this GoPro yeah like the GoPro uh, which takes fantastic stills and video but of course compression has always been an issue so if you zoom into 100 percent you'll see that it's pretty aggressive about how it compresses and if you shoot in JPEG with any camera this size including this one uh, you'll see similar results but shooting in RAW is great because you get all the exposure latitude and uh, you get all the information the sensor's capturing uh, for post-processing later. Now, if I shoot in RAW, uh, I can't live update to Instagram, can I? Right, or so it's just JPEG for that. So if you shoot in JPEG, uh, you can browse all of the pictures and video you've taken from the app uh, at any time, even when it's flying. You can copy them to, to the phone and then do anything you want with them. Got it. So I can put them on Twitter, Facebook, wh whatever. Right. Right. Even while it's flying. While it's flying, yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, of course, it'll just be hovering there unless you hand it off to someone else to fly. Yeah. yeah. Well, and if you're a news team, you probably have two or three people uh, playing around with these things. Um, so that covers the stills. It covers the video. All right, let's talk about uh, flying this thing because most people haven't flown a drone yet, right? Uh, right? Or if they have, they they had a friend that let them fly it for two minutes in a parking lot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's sort of my experience yeah. with it. How long does it take to learn to fly? Uh, well, it depends what kind you get. With this one, um, it, because it's GPS enabled, uh, it, you can learn to fly it in a, at a very basic level uh, pretty much immediately. So most people we found have had success on their first flight um, because you just it has an auto takeoff feature. So if you throttle up, it just takes off. And, and then it will just hover where you've left it. So if you let go of the sticks, both of them are spring loaded here. Yeah. Right? So if you let go, um, it will stay exactly where you've left it. Um, and that's a really great feature because at any time if you feel uncomfortable, you can just let go and know that it will stay in the same place. Um, now this, this stick lets you move it um, you know, forward, backward, left and right. So that's no commonly known as pitch and roll. And this one is throttle and orientation or yaw. So if, as you uh, turn the left stick left and right, your aircraft will move left and right. 
So it's pretty easy to get, get a feel for what, it, what you're doing. Um, and of course, because you can see out of the camera, it's sort of like, it's like flying a flight simulator or playing a video game. A lot of people are familiar with that first person view. And uh, so it makes it uh, pretty easy to learn. Yeah. Of course, if you want to master it, um, you do need to put in, put in the time. Mostly it's an orientation issue. You know, when you're flying in a particular direction and that's not the direction you're facing, it can take some time to get used to how, how the controls make yeah. the aircraft move. I saw uh, one guy, one photographer at South by Southwest Music um, uh, flying it like over, uh, over some bikes up over the stage and then over the crowd, and that was pretty advanced because you don't want to fly this near people if you don't if you really are not comfortable and, and pretty confident in your skills, right? Because these things right. can hurt people. Right? Um, they potentially can. It weighs about it weighs about three pounds. Yeah. Um, there are some safety features built in to try to avoid those situations. For example, there's a minimum prop speed, so if you throttle down all the way, it won't just fall out of the air; it will descend. Um, and uh, it also has uh, a really great fail-safe feature. Um, fail-safe is kind of the hobby word for it, but basically if it loses radio contact, if I turn this radio off, yep. um, it will notice that it has no radio control, and what it, it will do is come home to launch point and hover until the battery's low and that will land itself. So at no point will it just fall out of the sky unless there's, there's actually some physical problem, like um, you know something burns out inside or it's raining or you know something like that. Okay. Um. That, that integration of GPS is really interesting. And so if, if there's a lot of wind and it's pushing your, uh, your drone um, off course, it, it, it sees that and it can correct it itself? Right, so wind will not move it by default if it has GPS lock, uh, which is great for people, especially for beginners. Yeah. And um, because it has a maximum flight speed of about 30 miles an hour, you can actually hover in 30 mile an hour wind, uh, which is not recommended, but it can be done. So, you know, I'm pretty comfortable personally flying in 15 knot winds. Yeah. Um, it, it does a great job. It can still fly 15 miles an hour in one, you know, in the upwind direction, which is fast enough to get it back if I need it. Now, you shot some video of surfers. So you flew it over water, which yeah. sounds really scary for something that's going right. to be in a $1,500 price point. Yeah. And yeah. We, you actually wrote a blog that people have crashed these things and, and uh, with varying success of uh, being able to to uh, uh, recuperate them, right? Right. Yeah, actually my motivations for getting into this were pretty much 100% about flying over water uh, because I have an underwater photography background. And so I've always wanted to see this aerial perspective of the reefs that we dive and animals on the surface like big sharks. And, um, and this is really the only way to do it. I mean, you can't get over that environment without a helicopter, which is not gonna go you know, at 50 feet, it's gonna be at 1,000 feet. Um, so, you know, these things uniquely give you a perspective over water. So, of course, since a lot of my friends are into it, they immediately bought them, and on the first day I took them out over water, and there was, you know, it's basically 95% user error, like it ran out of battery or something, and it dropped into the ocean. So you have to be really careful when it's over water, and I would only recommend doing it if you are willing to take the risk. <laughs> That's an interesting question. What is the f average flight time uh, on a single battery charge? Uh, so the battery is rated at 25 minutes. That's 25 minutes to flat. Um, typically, you don't want to run it all the way down. So a real-world flight time might be 18 minutes, 18 to 20 minutes, um, and that's uh, something that we're actually getting. Uh, and that, that's a long time. I mean, 20 minutes of flight time. Can you show me the battery? Because it's actually sure. a pretty sizable battery in this thing, right? So here's the battery. It's, it's a cartridge-based battery. It's a smart battery, so it has integrated electronics for charging. Um, and that's a departure in this industry. You know, typically you use dumb batteries that you, you plug in using cables. Um, but what we wanted to do is make sure that people could use a very simple charger instead of having to go buy third-party chargers that do all the balancing of the cells and things like that. Yeah. So it's a 5200 milliamp hour battery. It's, it's pretty beefy. Um, and uh, 11.1 volts, and to install it, you just yeah. You could buy, obviously, extra batteries, and they take, what, an hour to charge up? Uh, you can buy extra batteries. They take just over an hour to charge up okay. and uh, with the current chargers, and they have a battery, they have a, a capacity indicator on the back, so if you push this button here, oh, sorry. Yeah. so if you push this button right here, it shows you uh, the battery life. Okay. 
And obviously you need uh, your iPhone charged up. And how about this thing? Do you need batteries in that? Yeah, the radio takes um, AA batteries, the back four of them. Okay. And, uh, and also the range extender uh, needs to be charged up, and that's done by micro USB here. Okay. And how long does that take to charge up? Uh, it actually takes, I actually don't know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I usually just plug it in and walk away, um, but it doesn't seem to take that long. Okay. Um, hmm, what else do I need to know about the world of drones and photography? Is it basically, you buy one and you start playing with it and get comfortable with uh, your skills so that you can do more advanced stuff like flying over people and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, well, we would, we would ne never recommend flying over people, even though we know people do it. Yeah. Um, and uh, mostly it's just to start slow. So, you know, I, I like to imagine that I've saved up for some number of months. Most people save up to buy something like this because it's not cheap. Um, and then you, of course, treat that equipment very differently. Um, because if you crash it, uh, most likely, you know, it's, it's actually really durable. I've crashed a ton of these, especially when I was learning. Um, but I had different cameras on the bottom. You know, I had a housed GoPro, you know, something indestructible that I would use in the beginning. Um, gimbals are really precise, you know, and they need to be treated with respect. So if you do crash it, um, you know, you, you want to make sure that you, you're, you're very careful. <laughs> yeah. Gimbal. Um, tell me about uh, the props come off on this, right? So if I'm yeah. carrying it around, it's easier to carry around or? Yeah, the props come off. Um, one of the, the things about the Phantom 2 when it came out is that it basically allows you to attach and remove props really, really quickly. So each prop has a direction that it, it screws on. Um, and that's all you need to do. You don't need to tighten it. You don't need to use Loctite. Um, and the reason is that the motor spins in a direction that tightens each prop. Um, so two of the props are cross-threaded, uh, two of the motors as well. Yeah. Um, and that's this it. one comes off the this opposite way. This one comes way. off the opposite way, that's right. So it just comes off like that. You can put them on in literally um, three seconds. Yeah, that's cool. Very cool. And it comes yeah. out today, because if you're watching the video, it's out, and uh, you yeah, can buy it. Out. Does it ship immediately, or uh, it will do ship have very shortly it? after, okay. um, probably a week or two. Um, it's pretty much it should be on its way. It's on its way to dealers already. Very cool. Can't wait to try it. Yeah, man. let's go fly it. Yeah, thank you so much <laughs> for right. coming in. Where do we learn more about it? At DJI.com. Very cool. Thank you for coming. Yeah, in. thank you very much. You gotta go after Robert. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>